Remember, when we take a fraction and we divide it by another fraction, all we're doing is to see how many times that second fraction will fit inside of the first fraction. Now, in all of these problems, I've constructed it so that it will go a whole number of times, but just keep in mind, if you change the fractions a little bit, it may not go a whole number of times. You may have a fractional answer, and that's okay. So let's take a look at problem one. Two-thirds divided by two-twelfths. So what does two-thirds look like anyway? Here we have one-third here, and we have another third right here. That makes two-thirds total, right? Uh, because one, two, three, so there's two pieces out of three, and so altogether, one-third, one-third, this becomes two-thirds. Now, two-twelfths means I cut the same thing into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, uh, pieces there, and I keep two of them. Notice this is the entire thing is two twelfths. So how many times can this fit into everything up above? So let's take a look. If we shade this, this is two thirds, and then the two twelfths will fit one time, it'll fit two times, it'll fit three times, and it will fit four exact times. So we say that it is equal to four. So two thirds divided by two twelfths goes four whole times. All right? But again, if I change two twelfths and change it to maybe two elevenths instead, then what will happen is the size of these will change a little bit and it won't go a whole number of times. There'll be a little bit of extra leftover, so it'll be a fractional answer because it won't fit a whole number of times. Problem number two, let's take a look at three fifths divided by three tenths. So this is one fifth, another one fifth, and another one fifth for a total of three fifths on the top and then three tenths on the bottom because I cut it into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Three of those tenths will be this. How many times will this fit in there? So here in blue, it's three fifths, and then we have the three tenths will fit one whole time, and then the three fifths, again, will fit exactly another whole time. For a total of two whole times, it will fit into there. All right, so three fifths divided by three tenths is two. But again, keep in mind, if I change either one of these, if I change this to one seventh, then the size of the, of the fractions will be a little bit different and then it won't fit a whole number of times. It will probably spill out of the boundary, in which case the answer you get will not be a whole number, it'll be a fractional answer, maybe a mixed number type of answer, but it won't go a whole number of times. All right, next problem, one half divided by three twelfths. One half is when you cut the thing in two pieces and take one, and three twelfths is when you cut it into 12 pieces and take three. So how many times will this fit? This is what we have is one half, the three twelfths will go one whole time, two whole times. You can see the boundaries line up exactly, so it goes two whole times. But again, if I were to change the one half into you know one seventh or one eleventh or one you know thirteenth or something, this will not fit a whole number of times. We would have a fractional answer. All right, for our last two problems, let's take a look at four fifths divided by two fifteenths. So here we have. One, two, three, four, five equal slices, and we have four of them. So this is what four fifths looks like. One fifth, one fifth, one fifth, one fifth, that's four fifths. And then two fifteenths, we cut this into 15 equal pieces. Let's double check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And we have two of them, so that's two fifteenths. How many times will this fit in there? Well, if we have four fifths, it will fit. Two fifteenths will go in one whole time, then two, then three, then four, then five, then six whole times. Notice the boundary lines up exactly. So the answer to this one is it goes six whole times. All right, and our final problem here is what if we have two thirds and we're gonna divide it by two ninths. So here's one third, here's another third for a total of two thirds. Two ninths is two pieces out of nine. How many times will it go in? Two thirds and divided by two ninths goes one whole time, then two whole times, then three whole times. The boundaries line up exactly, so it goes three whole times. So again, the problems here have been constructed to divide an even number of times. But if I change this to maybe, uh, you know, two sevenths or two elevenths or whatever, then the width of the fractions will change a little and it may not go exactly. You might be kind of going over a little bit and not fitting exactly at the end. So that would mean you would have a mixed number answer. Some whole number of times it would fit in, like if it just spilled over a little bit, it would still go a whole number of times, but then it would have a fraction. The last time that it would try to fit in would be a fraction because it wouldn't fit in an entire time that last uh, time. 
So the point here isn't to get into very complex problems with pictures. The, pro the point here is to show you that dividing fractions is very understandable. You take the first fraction and you try to see how many times that second fraction will fit in. In all of these cases, they go a whole number of times. But when we solve our actual problems, when we divide fractions, we will often see mixed number answers or fractional answers. And that just means it doesn't fit a whole number of times and it may go a fraction of the way in. So I'd like you to go back through these and really make sure you understand the concept of dividing fractions. And then follow me on to the next lesson, we're going to dispense with the pictures and we're going to start learning how to divide a fraction by another fraction and not use any pictures, but just calculate the answer and understand what that fraction, fractional answer really represents. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.